Hey everybody, welcome to another video of learning Japanese. I just spent 40 minutes filming this entire lesson without the microphone on, so time to kurikayasu. Alright, so sorry if I'm kind of already breaking a sweat already at the beginning of the video, but like I said, uh, we're about to redo about an hour of filming, so... Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we're going to be covering another grammar pattern, and so the grammar pattern that we're going to be covering today is the... Uh, grammar pattern that is naosara and this is going to translate to basically uh, the most common translation is all the more and so naosara we're going to be calling it a grammar pattern uh, but it is actually kind of its own standalone phrase or word and like I just said it means all the more and in line with this definition it's going to be used to basically emphasize a positive statement or actually even a negative statement. So let's give a really quick example in English. We can say in a positive statement, uh, I love eating watermelons all the more so when it's uh, a hot summer day. Or if we want to say a negative statement, uh, he is completely terrible at physical activities much less an intense sport like football. So we can see here how there's an emphasis in both of these statements, even though they're opposites, basically positive and negative. In the positive statement, we said all the more, that of course is kind of emphasizing the more. And in the negative statement, we said much less, uh, to emphasize the less with the word much. Now to put a magnifying glass on the actual Japanese of this, we are using the word naosara instead, and it's gonna be applying to both positive and negative statements. It'll translate to all the more, some other natural translations that it might come into are uh, more so, or even more, or further, or much less, if we're using a negative statement. Uh, like we just exhibited. And so speaking of putting a magnifying glass on the Japanese aspect of this, let's take a look at the actual kanji that formed the word just to get more context here. So the first kanji we have is now, and the second kanji is sara. Both of these kanji actually pretty much have the same definition. Uh, now and sara kind of translate to more or further. And so uh, we see here that two kanjis that mean the same thing, both of them mean more, so we have more and more which is actually a pretty good mnemonic device for us to remember what naosara means because more and more is kind of actually what it literally means. All the more, we have all the mores and more and more further, etc. I'll give you another mnemonic device to remember what this means when you hear it because I'm such a nice person. Uh, consider the word imasara. Uh, at this point in our studies, I don't expect everybody to know what imasara means or to have heard the word, but I definitely probably expect you to know what ima means. Ima means now, which is actually how you pronounce the first kanji in naosara. So ima means now, uh, but what does imasara mean? Well, imasara, when we use that instead of ima, we kind of have this emphasis or emphasized meaning of now after all this time. So usually people use imasara when they want to say it's too late to apologize or it's too late to do this or something along those lines. So now after all this time, it's too late. And so just by adding the sara onto the word ima, we emphasize that now is too late. So the emphasis thing, sara is an emphasis thing. If we can remember that from the word ima sara, which is a pretty common word to be honest, then we should be able to remember when we hear now sara, oh, sara is that word that means more or further or emphasize. So now sara is going to mean all the more or more and more, even more so, something along those lines. Yeah, we got it. Okay, so that's gonna about cover it for the background information. I think that's enough context. Um, in terms of construction here, how we're gonna be using this grammar pattern, where it appears in sentences, like I said in the beginning, this is a grammar pattern, we're calling it a grammar pattern, but it is kind of its own standalone phrase or word, and in that sense, it can pretty much appear wherever it wants to in the sentence, or wherever you want it to, because you're the master of the sentence here, you're constructing the sentences. But I can tell you that the most common place that it'll probably appear is basically after a conjunction that connects two clauses. So, It'll commonly appear after a conjunction like kara, which means because, or the conjunction to, which is just gonna connect two clauses. And um, yeah, you can kind of get a sense of that, something, something, yada, yada, yada. Because of this, all the more this. Or yada, 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 to, all the more this. And if that didn't make enough sense for you, we are gonna stop yada, yada, yada and jump into some actual real example sense, some real ones. So let's do this. Okay, so for our first example sense, we are gonna have the line, Asa gohan o tabe wasureta kara imasara. Oh shoot, I said imasara. Nao sara guda guda da yo. And so, what this line right here is going to translate to is 
because I forgot to eat breakfast this morning, I'm feeling all the more exhausted. So let's break down this line um, word by word to get a feel what's going on here with the Japanese. So first word, asa gohan, that's just going to translate to breakfast or morning meal. We're going to mark it with the direct object marker O to, because it's a direct object to the verb that's about to come, which is the verb taberu. So taberu means to eat. However, we're not going to use that verb. We changed our mind. We don't want that. We want it to be to forget to eat. So what we're going to do then is we're going to turn this into a kind of a compound verb. So we take the primos form of taberu, which is tabe, and then we add on, we plug on the word wasureru, which means to forget. So tabe wasureru is going to then mean to forget to eat. However, we're not done here because we're greedy. We want to add more to this. We want to say this happened in the past because we're talking about this morning, which was earlier. It happened already. So tabe wasureru means to forget to eat. But we want to say forgot to eat. So we're going to change that to tabe wasureta. And that right there is going to complete our first clause. So asa gohan o tabe wasureta. This is going to translate to oh, I forgot to eat breakfast this morning. We're not done with the sentence though. We haven't used our grammar pattern here. So let's continue on. Let's add the conjunction kara. So because I forgot to eat breakfast this morning, and now our grammar pattern is going to make its crazy appearance. Naosara. Oh man, that was crazy. So naosara is going to of course translate to all the more or even more or more so. What is it going to be all the more of? Well, we find out with the word right after that because it's basically modifying the word that appears right after it, which is guda guda. This is kind of a casual word that means um, to be exhausted. So naosara guda guda is going to mean all the more exhausted or even more so exhausted. And that pretty much sums up our sentence. We just end it now with the kopila da and then the sentence ending particle yo to add a kind of explanatory note. So once again, the whole sentence, asa gohan o tabe wasureta kara, because I forgot to eat lunch, I mean, forgot to eat breakfast this morning, or I forgot to eat this morning, uh, I am feeling all the more exhausted. Naosara guda guda da yo. Okay, we're now gonna move on to the next exam sentence, even though my voice is getting kind of dry, uh, because I filmed this video lesson twice, my voice is getting all the more dry. Whoa. Okay, so for our real example sentence number two, we have the line mite wa ikenai to iwareru to naosara mitaku naru. And what this line right here is going to translate to is when you're told not to look at something, you want to look at it all the more. So let's break it down word by word now to get a feel of what's going on. First up, we have the word mite, which is just going to be the verb miru, which means to see or to look or to watch. And it's te form. And it's in its te form because we're using a grammar pattern here that is the te form of a verb plus the phrasing uh, wa ikenai to mean it is not okay to do that verb or you, you're not allowed to do that verb. So mite wa ikenai is going to translate to it's not okay to look or it's you're not allowed to look. Right after that is going to be the particle to because this is going to be um, a quotation marker basically. It's going to be marking what we just said as a quote. So you're not, don't look at this. You're not allowed to look at this. That's what someone's saying. And after to we have the verb you which means to say in its passive form. So it's going to turn into iwareru. So Mite wa ikenai to iwareru is going to translate to you are told don't look at this or you're not allowed to look at this or whatever. Uh, then after that we have the particle to again except this isn't going to be the same kind of to. This is instead going to be a conjunction basically that connects this clause to the next one and it's, and it's probably just going to translate to and or when. So when you are told don't look at this or you're not allowed to look at this. Now we move on to our second half of our sentence and again this is where our grammar pattern appears. Naosara mitaku naru. This is going to translate to you become such that you want to see it all the more. So we see here that naosara is going to translate to, of course, all the more. It's going to be modifying the word right after it, which is kind of this compound word here, the verb miru once again, to look or to see in its tai form, the desirative tai form, which means to want to see. So mitai, conjugate that once again to its ku form. So mitaku, and this is going to then be added on to naru, which means to become. So it becomes or you become to want to see all the more so. So once again, uh, mite wa ikenai to iwareru to um, naosara mitaku naru. This is going to translate to something along the lines of when you're told not to look at something, you want to see it even more so or all the more. Let's move on to our next example sentence. We have the double sentence example that is party ga jubun suki da bijin ni sasowareru to uh, naosara ikitai da yo. This sentence right here or rather this two sentence example here is going to translate to I like parties enough as it is if I'm invited by a beautiful woman I want to go all the more so let's break down this sentence or both of these sentences bit by bit to get a feel of what's going on here uh, the first sentence we have is just this 
setup sense basically. It doesn't have a ground pattern or anything, but let's break it down anyways. It is potty. This is going to turn into, of course, party. We have the particle ga because we're using the ga ski ground pattern, which means to like or to love something. So Pati Gaski is going to mean I like parties. However, we just added this extra adverb here, Jubun, which means basically enough or plenty. So I like parties enough as it is, or I like parties plenty already. Add the copula da after ski to end the sentence. So Pati ga Jubun ski da. And now we're gonna move on to our next sentence. It is gonna start with the word Bijin, which means beautiful woman or beautiful girl. Um, it's gonna be followed by the particle ni because this is what we do to mark the basically the thing that performs the passive verb and we're using a passive verb here so our passive verb is sasowareru which means um, to be invited so bijin ni sasowareru means to be invited by a beautiful woman or beautiful girl once again we have the particle to to kind of be this conjunction so when I'm invited by a beautiful girl or if I'm invited by a beautiful girl um, now we have our grammar pattern, nao sada, and it is again going to be modifying a verb in its Thai form. So instead of miru, mitai, which means to want to see, we now have ikitai, which means to want to go. So nao sada ikitai is going to be want to go even more so, or all the more. And again, right after that is just going to following the kopila da and the explanatory yo particle. So wrap it up all together, uh, pati ga jubun ski da. Uh, this is going to translate to I love parties enough as it is. When I'm invited by a beautiful girl though, I want to go all the more so. We are now going to move on to our last example sentence. And this fourth example here is going to be pretty short, but it has a uh, nice form to it. So what we have is What this line right here is going to translate to is getting up early is tough even more so on days off. So let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up we have hayaoki, which is gonna be a noun. It's gonna mean getting up early. You can see here, hopefully that it is um, actually a noun formed by just two other words, the adjective hayai, which means early or fast, and the verb okiru, which means to rise up or to get up or to wake up. We combined those two essences and made this noun, which is hayaoki, which is gonna mean getting up early. We're gonna mark that with the particle wa because it's our topic here. And now we're simply gonna describe it with one adjective, which is gonna be surai. So that's gonna to translate to tough or difficult. So hayaoki wa surai. That's gonna be a very simple sentence right here, a statement that means getting up early is tough. That feel though. Because this statement here is so simple, it's such a simple sentence, we're gonna continue it with just a comma. We don't even need a conjunction. It's so simple, so, so simple. So. Uh, we're going to combine it with another simple statement and together those will just form one sentence, a very simple, clean, elegant sentence. So now after this comma that we've inserted, we have um, our next topic. We're going to establish another topic and that is going to be the noun of a noun modification that is yasumi no hi. Yasumi is a noun that means vacation. He is the noun that means day. So um, day of vacation is going to mean basically day off or vacation day or day without work. Like I said, this is going to be our new topic. So we're going to mark it with the topic particle wa. So yasumi no hiwa. And so now we have not used our grammar pattern here, naosara. And what we're going to do actually is just going to plug that in and that's going to finish the whole thing. So yasumi no hiwa naosara. Then we end the sentence with the copula da. So you might be going, hey, what's going on here? Usually, nausada modifies a word right after it that's like an adjective or a verb or something to mean all the more that word, but we don't have a word after nausada now, so what the heck is it all the more of? Well, it's going to be referencing the adjective that we used already at the beginning of the sentence, which was sudai. And so this is going to mean all the more difficult, but we just don't restate the difficult, the word sudai. So take a look at the whole sentence once again. Hayaoki wa sudai, yasumi no hi wa nausada da. This is going to translate to, of course, Getting up early in the morning or whatever is tough, all the more so uh, on days off. You'll see here that even in the English translation, we do not need to restate sudai as difficult or tough. We just say all the more so and it references back to that. And it's a pretty elegant sense, both in the English form and the original Japanese form. And of course, this is also a nice additional exhibit of how, like I said at the beginning, this now side is a grammar pattern, but it also is kind of its own standalone word and phrase that can, well, stand alone. So uh, yeah, we just experienced that and that is going to cover, that's going to be it for our last example sentence for this grammar pattern. My voice is really depleting here, but um, yeah, hopefully you learned the gist of this grammar pattern and that was enough example sentences for you to um, recognize how it's working here and hopefully you'll be able to recognize it if someone says some sense with it in it. 
Uh, we did actually not cover a negative statement with this grammar pattern, but we do, what we did do is include additional example sense, like twice as much in the description below, as well as, as well as the post of this grammar lesson on our website. So check that out for more context so you can know how this is really working. The additional example sentences weren't ones that I made up myself, but they're from the Webleo search results, but I handpicked those example sentences because they are, um, yeah, just as good as the ones that we cover in this video, if not better. Um, so yeah, check those out. So that is gonna cover it for our grammar pattern. Now set out to mean all the more, or even more so, or even more, or much less, or something along those lines. We have now locked and loaded another grammar pattern in our arsenal of Japanese uh, communication. And so yeah, hopefully you feel like you've gotten smarter. Stay tuned for the next grammar pattern lesson.